Elliot Abrams, welcome to Bloomberg, sir, special representative for Iran and Venezuela. So I suppose what we all really want to know is your three-stop trip. Are you readying for more sanctions against Iran? We have a multi-year sanctions program on Iran. <clears throat> There's a pretty regular flow of sanctions. Uh, there have been sanctions in the last few days. There will be more. There's no particular uh, speed up of the flow, but it, um, it continues. In these last 70 days of, of the Trump administration, what we want to get a sense of in our region is, is America trying to build a coalition for a military strike if necessary? You know, I've heard that. I mean, I, I um, but I hear it from the exactly the same sources that were confident that there would be a Trump military strike in October prior to the election. So I would uh, urge you to disregard um, the people who have uh, fervid conspiracy theories. Uh, so that American so a military, military strike activity. is off the table. American, a military strike yeah. is not your ambition. Military strikes are never our ambition, but they are never off the table in protecting the United States. Uh, I just think that all of this is connected somehow to bizarre theories, um, mostly connected to the American election, and those theories have already been proved wrong. The United States has very capable military forces in the Middle East. Uh, we will use them to defend Americans in the region. Uh, but the notion that we have an intent and desire to engage in aggressive activities is garbage. Well, let's talk about the foreign policy finally. The allies, the allies in the region, some have warned that a revival of the 2015 uh, Iran Accord that you say you're reasonably optimistic there will be some kind of a deal next year could destabilize the reason, region and ultimately lead to conflict. Is that a real risk, sir? I think there is a real risk that if the leverage we have on Iran is discarded rather than being used, if Iran is able to continue its conduct in this region, continue its missile program, uh, I think there is every reason for its neighbors to fear more of the same, more subversive activity, more aggressive behavior. We see it throughout the region. The only thing that will restrain it, the only thing that will prevent Iran from continuing is pressure. They don't want to change their conduct. Why would they? The answer is they will only under concerted pressure. Now, the Iranians broke silence over the past couple of days in terms of the number of barrels of oil that they've managed to ship during this period of maximum pressure. They say six to 700,000. What is your estimate? Uh, I think that's probably not an unreasonable estimate. Uh, it changes clearly from uh, month to month as we enforce the sanctions and they try to go around them. Uh, I think it's very clear, though, that there has been a massive decrease in the amount of oil that they are able to export first. Second, not only is demand for oil low because of uh, uh, the, the general problems in the world economy, but they're forced to give discounts because of the sanctions campaign. So that also reduces the revenue they're getting. Uh, and their economy is clearly in a significant amount of trouble. You see it in the value of the real. You are the closest thing to access to the Saudi regime that, that we will speak to in the next week or so. Is there an appetite from the conversations that you've had to join the coalition of the UAE, Bahrain, and Israel? I think there is an appetite in Saudi Arabia for more collaboration with all of the countries of the region that are facing this Iranian threat. The question is, how does that manifest itself? In which agreements, how many public how many not so public? And I think we'll see that transpire over the course of 2021.